July 25th, 1991. A primetime investigation. Evidence of lead poisoning in ordinary residential areas across the country. A lot of people don't know if there are toxins in the backyard or in the neighborhood playground. You realize that your kids are playing in dirt that has the same contamination as an industrial waste. Lead has traveled into the soil from the highways, and children are playing in a hidden poison. From ABC News, with anchors Diane Sawyer in New York, Sam Donaldson in Washington, Chief Correspondent Chris Wallace, Judd Rhodes, Jay Shadler, Sylvia Chase, and John Quinones. Prime Time. From New York, Diane Sawyer. Good evening. Lead poisoning has been called the leading environmental problem facing children today. One in six American children has had too much exposure, which can cause severe neurological damage. So just two months ago, the federal government set standards for lead in water, and millions of dollars are being spent to remove leaded paint from old houses. But tonight, Chief Correspondent Chris Wallace investigates new evidence that the biggest danger of lead poisoning may be right in your backyard. at uh, 504. October 1989, a powerful earthquake rocked Northern California. And we have a bad freeway collapse. In Oakland, Interstate 880 collapsed, killing 43 people. Afterward, local officials wanted to rebuild the freeway somewhere else, especially after they found a study that showed the freeway had been a menace to the area long before the earthquake. We found that where there was heavy automobile traffic, such as freeways, there was higher lead content in that soil than in other places. Alameda County Supervisor Warren Widener is talking about findings that along the interstate, dozens of yards that were tested had high concentrations of lead, higher than the federal guideline for hazardous waste. In this yard, two blocks from the freeway, it was four times that level. The study raised the possibility of a whole new threat, not from lead in paint or lead in the water, but from lead emissions from years of heavy traffic. Leaded gasoline has been largely phased out now, but for more than half a century, cars in this country ran on it. And the fallout, millions of tons of lead, ended up here, in the dirt alongside our busiest roads and highways. The problem is lead doesn't dissolve. It stays in the soil. It is a hidden poison in neighborhoods across America. There's no safe level for lead. That with every increase of exposure, you probably are at increased risk for child having neurological damage. Dr. Lynn Goldman of the California Department of Health Services has just finished a report on the health effects of lead on more than 500 children who live near Oakland's busiest roads and highways. Two thirds of the children in the neighborhood had blood level lead levels in toxic range. Two thirds and of the children? Isn't that astonishing? It it was astonishing. They have leads at a toxic level. They have lead poisoning. Lead poisoning attacks a child's brain and nervous system, causing learning disability, speech impediments, and hearing loss. Patrick Garvin has severe lead poisoning. How old are you? Three, four. Five. Most children show no symptoms until serious damage has already occurred. The effects are long-lasting, sometimes permanent. The Zamora family knows all about lead. They live close to the freeway, and six of them have had lead poisoning. Seven-year-old Marguerite was the sickest. She had convulsions, her nose bled, and her hair fell out. Antonio is her older brother. People came and tested the water. Water was real good. The paint, you know, but... Was, was the paint okay? Yeah. What do they think caused all the illnesses in your family? The, 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 the area. Oakland is one of the few cities where they now worry about lead in the soil. This playground along the freeway has been shut down because of lead levels that were six times the guidelines for hazardous waste. The concern is understandable because a young child in a contaminated area can be poisoned in less than a month just by inhaling dust or eating dirt, as many kids do. Professor Howard Milkey of Xavier University is a pioneer in the study of contaminated soil. It's become a kind of mission for him. My own daughter got exposed fairly highly once, and uh, that hurt. 
Beverly Milky was three when she was poisoned by the dirt in a sandbox at her daycare center. It was detected quickly and she had no long-term problems, but it brought the threat home to her father. You know, took a very personal, at that point, a personal commitment. Okay, this is a major problem in our society. What can we do to solve it? Milky began in Baltimore in the 70s, studying dirt in hundreds of gardens. He discovered that one in five had dangerous amounts of lead. He also found a pattern. Lead levels were highest near the busiest roads. His conclusion? Better gasoline was causing the major pattern of lead within the urban environment. Milky's research clashed with the establishment view that the big problem is lead paint flaking off houses. Government is spending millions of dollars to remove that threat. But Milky was raising a new, and up to this point, largely ignored danger. When Milky moved to Minneapolis in the early 80s, he continued his research into lead in the soil. His colleagues told him that Baltimore was a special case, with a history of heavy traffic and heavy industry. But here, in the land of 10,000 lakes, Milky found exactly the same problem. Over five years, he took readings from the inner city out to the suburbs, compared soil from urban and rural areas, and from houses with and without lead paint. Milky took us through one neighborhood he tested in Minneapolis with shocking amounts of lead. We found 500 to 1,000 parts per million uh, in the soils, in the areas right around the houses where children are playing. And, and how bad is that? If these soils were in a paint can, they would be considered an illegal material. If it were on an industrial site, it would be considered in illegal hazardous waste. Well, you know, now these kids have just been going past us. It's got to be very dangerous for them to be playing in yards with those levels of lead. Absolutely. Uh, here they are within their own front yards in an inner city neighborhood uh, playing in what would be recognized as industrial waste if it were at another location. To explain what Milky is talking about, a lead content of 20 parts per million in soil is considered normal. At 100 parts per million, increases in lead can be measured in a child's blood. 500 can trigger a hazardous waste cleanup under the federal Superfund program. A lead content of 600 is banned in paint. In his study, Milky found that in the most traffic congested parts of Minneapolis, half the houses had levels of 800 parts per million or more. Some were above 6,000. A mile away, average levels dropped to 500. Another mile away, 300. Levels remained above 100 well into the suburbs, more than five miles from downtown. Milky says he's found the same pattern across the country. Lead was put in gasoline in the 1920s to fuel bigger, more powerful cars. Right from the start, there were concerns about the health effects. But historian David Rosner says the auto and gas industries overwhelmed the critics. This is the 1920s, where the business of America was business. This was a period in which the future of America was seen to reside in the very companies that were creating tetraethyl lead. So you have this enormous pressure to promote business and promote industrialization under any cost. Starting in the 70s, when federal authorities began to question the safety of leaded gasoline, the Ethel Corporation and other lead manufacturers filed lawsuits to try to block any government action. Finally, in 1986, the Environmental Protection Agency cracked down on leaded gas. But by then, many neighborhoods had already been poisoned. Two-year-old Autumn Campbell and her brother Lance lived near downtown Minneapolis, not next to a highway, but just busy streets. The city has tested their house and found no lead in the paint. The children's mother, Raylene. My house is lead-free. They took soil samples outside, and I have very high lead in my soil. Once again, soil with more than 500 parts per million of lead is considered hazardous waste. The children's yard measured 1,870 parts per million. That's more than three times the level that would trigger a super fun cleanup. Not surprisingly, Autumn had severe lead poisoning. She had to be put on IVs um, for a week to clean her blood system out, to try and get the lead out. Has Autumn suffered any permanent effects from this? We don't know right now. She's being tested to find out if there's anything wrong with her. Four-year-old Lance also suffered from lead poisoning. And of course, the children still play in their yard. You realize that your kids are playing in dirt that has the same contamination as an industrial waste site. Yeah, but there's nothing I can do about it. I can't um, 
tell my kids they can't play outside. We believe that lead in soil, uh, particularly in certain parts of the country, can be a significant uh, health problem, and we want to, uh, to come to grips with it. Hank Habeck, who is deputy director of the EPA, says Professor Milkey's work on leaded gasoline is important. The EPA is now spending $15 million to study how contaminated soil affects children. The results are due next year. But so far, EPA's only cleanup work is through the Superfund program for industrial sites. EPA does not have an urban soil cleanup program at this point. Has EPA ordered the cleanup of soil in any residential neighborhoods in this country? Uh, uh, none that I'm aware of. You mean you have a program to clean up industrial sites, but not to clean up people's homes? You don't have generally levels of lead in urban soil at the same levels you have in large Superfund sites. Mr. Havoc, what if I were to tell you that, that we are aware of neighborhoods, residential neighborhoods, across this country that have lead levels of 500 parts per million or more? Well, we would certainly want to know about that. Mr. Havoc doesn't have to go far. We took our own soil samples along busy streets in Washington and then had them analyzed at this laboratory. In the yard of this house, within sight of the Capitol, 1,500 parts per million, three times the hazardous waste level. And in this yard, three miles from EPA, more than 7,000 parts per million. That's higher than levels found at some lead smelters. In the absence of government action, there have been a few isolated cleanup efforts across the country such as in Minneapolis, where Judy Adams does it for a living. The immediate hazard that lead poses is when dirt is bare, when kids have immediate access to it. Removing all the contaminated dirt from a yard can cost thousands of dollars and might make the problem worse by kicking up dust. A more realistic solution, cover the dirt with grass or sand or wood chips. Also, wash off sidewalks so dirt isn't tracked into the house. Only three states even have a standard for contaminated dirt. Minnesota is one of them, but progress is still slow and money scarce. This is the second house that has been ordered, as far as I know, to actually do soil cleanup. And we've had a soil lead standard on the books for over a year and a half. Government hasn't even begun to address who is liable for cleaning up a problem that may turn into the asbestos of the 90s. Who's going to pay for this? Who's going to pay for the cleanup? The first questions I try to understand that I care most about are where are the risks and what's the best way of reducing the risks. I honestly haven't thought about who should bear the cost. As we've said, the U.S. has phased out leaded gas, but the lead industry has found a new market in developing countries. The Ethyl Corporation, which refused to talk with us, has closed its U.S. plants, but still exports from a plant in Canada. Meanwhile, studies show the third world is now being contaminated. In Nigeria, lead levels along roads are reaching 7,000 parts per million. In Mexico City, half the children tested have dangerous levels of lead. Overseas or at home, the systematic poisoning of children is enough to shake even a scientist. How does it make you feel to drive through these neighborhoods and see these children playing in what amounts to hazardous waste sites and nothing being done about it? It's a tragedy. Um, I'd rather be Professor Milky. It's easier to you know, stay one step away from it. Um, it's very hard to take to see that number of children having those kinds of difficulties within those environments. The poison's still there and it will remain. It's a permanent feature of those neighborhoods until we do something about it. If you want your yard tested for lead, we discovered that basically you have to do it yourself. You can call your city or state health departments, but in our survey, very few of them were willing to test for lead in soil. So we suggest you check the yellow pages for a private laboratory in your area, scoop up some samples of dirt, take them to the lab. However, it does cost between $25 and $40 to have each sample tested. And don't forget to watch 2020 tomorrow night. I'm Diane Sawyer in New York. Good night to all of you and good night, Sam. Good night, Diane. I'm Sam Donaldson in Washington, inviting you to join us again next Thursday night for another edition of Primetime Live.